Hey everyone, I hope you are all well. I think because Ryanair was recruiting and now probably there are some training courses going on, I'm not exactly sure. I had some people, like quite a few people, message me saying they are about to go to the training course and yeah, I just kind of got quite a few questions. So I thought, okay, let me just try and put a few questions together in a video just to answer some of them, yeah? So I guess you could call these, you know, FAQs. <laughs> Alright, so hi there, love your YouTube channel, I'm a fan, can I ask, I'm going for Ryanair training soon for a cabin, to be a cabin crew, I have been watching your videos, do you pay for everything? Yeah, that's pretty much it, it's a bit longer than that, but they were asking if I paid for everything, or if in general, as a cabin crew, you have to pay for everything. Uh, the answer to that is yes and no, some things you pay for, some things you do not pay for. One of the first things you need to pay for is your accommodation at the training center, well, near the training center. So upfront, you need to be able to pay for transport, of course, to the assessment day. And then of course, um, accommodation, um, basic clothes that you're gonna be wearing at the training center. So you need kind of smart, casual clothes. Somebody was asking me, what clothes do you wear during the training course? That information should be provided for you in your um, welcome pack. They should provide a grooming manual in there. So just please do try to read the information in there because it is there. They are a bit strict when you get to the training course. You are going to be getting grooming checks every single day, checking your nails, checking your hair, checking your shoes, checking your tights. You can't wear tights that are too thick. They need to be like, I think it's, don't quote me on this, but I think it's about 15 denier. So you will be getting those grooming checks every day and you need to make sure you buy the clothes beforehand so that you're not kind of scrambling for clothes like on your days off trying to find something to wear uh, because you only have really kind of chill clothes. So just go maybe to Primark or something, any shop of your choice that you prefer, you know, where you get some nice <laughs> clothes that fit you well, comfortably, but smart. And just stock up on a few pairs of pants, some skirts for the ladies and everything that you need because one thing that happened to us on my training course was that loads of girls were like, running to Frankfurt and other cities even I think we even f managed to find a charity shop to get a couple of things from there I would not recall I mean yeah I wouldn't if I, if I could go back in time I would not if I, I would have avoided it like I would have avoided um, having to buy anything even though it was not expensive but it's not exactly nice kind of sometimes wearing clothes that have been worn by somebody else. Um, I remember I did kind of, I had my, I think I had my own watch, but I kind of grabbed a black strapped watch and just fell apart. <laughs> so sometimes the things that they're selling in these charity shops are not very uh, good quality. So just get, get go to a shop that you know, you know, sells decent stuff and stock, stock up on these things because you will be checked every single day. You do not have to pay for the training course. That is free. I think I mentioned it in one of the videos and probably the first video. The training course is free as far as I know. Maybe something has changed, but I really don't think so. Yeah, that's free. You do have to go do your own grocery shopping, but they do give you what they call a per DM. So that's a weekly payment of around 130 euros to cover a few basic items such as groceries, you know, toiletries, and just kind of small things here and there. And that's what they pay you for being on the training course. Otherwise, you just need to be able to pay for your accommodation. And of course, have some money for the accommodation at your base. So of course, at least at a minimum, have enough for the first month of rent. And of course, the deposit. Um, depending on what country you're going to, the rules will be different. Some people on my training course actually made sure they secured some accommodation before the training course and some did uh, while they were on the training course so that you know it was set so yeah that's just something to think about for yourself just to make this very clear they do not pay for your accommodation you need to pay for that yourself okay second question kind of connected to the first do they pay you something during the training course yes they pay you something a little bit 
about 100 to 130 euros that was the case in germany at least okay somebody said hello sweetie thank you for this info i want to ask you something you think that i could work and study a career at the same time i'm asking because of the hours and etc so this question actually reminded me of my colleague and my good friend she was studying for a master's while working as a flight attendant and of course during the training course so it is definitely possible to study study and do this job at the same time you just have to strike up the right balance and you can make it happen you can do your studies but one thing you need to know is they do not permit you to have a second job while doing this job so yeah you, you can't do that maybe if you have your own kind of remote job where you work freelance or you work on your own time that could be possible but you again you'd have to be able to respond to the call for example at home standby and of course you have to be able to show up to your scheduled flights so yeah you'd have to definitely work around that but you are not really allowed to have a second job while doing this flight attendant job with Ryanair okay this is this one is more of a passenger kind of question somebody said excellent video I'm thinking about using Ryanair. I have been looking at the company and other consumer websites and there seems to be a disagreement as to what the company policy is on using your cell phone to shoot videos on board. Could you settle this disagreement as to what the policy is? Thank you. And I, and I believe this comment is from the video where I'm just kind of reading out Ryanair reviews. So basically this person wants to know if it's possible to use your cell phone to shoot videos. Now I don't know if they mean shoot videos of themselves or shoot video of the aircraft or shoot videos of the crew but and I'm not exactly clear on the policy but I can tell you about a couple of experiences that I've had the first experience was when I was a passenger and you know flight attending was not on my mind I remember I walked into the aircraft with my camera the one something similar to what I'm filming on now big camera kind of DSLR and one of the crew told me to turn the camera off and to you know not film uh, oh my god I remember that was my probably my f second time that was my first time using Ryanair and I was on you know the old aircraft the old model with the big chunky seats and I just found it so I just found it so squashy like so tight like I really don't like that model but yeah I remember one of the crew at the back told me because I was boarding from the back she told me to uh, to put my camera away please and I did that so there you go the crew have the right to tell you to put away your camera and to stop filming if they feel that you could be filming them and sometimes they just generally feel uncomfortable with people even vlogging if you just want to kind of vlog your trip some crew do feel uncomfortable about that because they don't always know what your motivation is so i put it away i was fine with it i was not thinking about my being a flight attendant i was just traveling myself and i think i was probably vlogging as well my next experience with cameras on board is of course as a flight attendant now I never tried to vlog while I was at work. I never tried to film a day in my life or film myself just because I wanted my privacy. Even though it would have kind of been really nice. It would have been nice to film a day in my life. I could have just kept it and then published it later. But I really didn't want to film myself at work and then of course publish it at the same time because I really wanted my privacy and I wanted to respect my colleagues privacy as well so that's the reason why I didn't film on board even though I could have just asked like do you mind being in my vlog or do you mind especially if they're a friend of mine if I know them they probably would not have minded but I just made the decision that I didn't really want to be filming at work and then again while at work I had the experience where passengers would take pictures of me take pictures of the staff in general take try to take pictures as I think I mentioned in the previous video try to take pictures while we were in the jump seat you know you'd be having i was i remember having a conversation with these three guys in the first row me and my colleague were having a conversation with them and then one of them at the left took out his phone and just started filming like like this like kind of like it was so it was so dodgy and um i'm not sure why maybe he just wanted to capture the moment but i just told him please can you stop filming me and of course it's embarrassing you know because you're just doing it very sneakily instead of asking for a photo of course he went bright red you know embarrassed but i had to speak up for myself i don't i didn't feel comfortable with it if i don't even take videos of myself and 
I did take a few photos, but that was like, just to capture the moment, but if I don't take photos of myself at work on the jump seat, then why would I want you to? you know so it happened quite a few times people trying to take photos trying to take videos and i never ever liked it i just never ever liked it i never ever felt like as if it was a comfortable thing to do like it, it never ever felt comfortable for me so in most cases i did tell people please stop filming please stop taking a photo please delete that for most of the time they did kind of put the camera down or sometimes they'll be like oh, i'm not filming you and i mean some passengers can be rude you have to be prepared for that but and again i don't know the general policy but i know that the staff have a right to request that you do not film them or that you do not film in the aircraft some staff do film their days like day in the life that's up to them i just know that because i've seen it on youtube <laughs> that's the only reason i know but what you could do is as you walk into the aircraft you could ask them would it be okay for me to you know just film myself i won't be filming you i'll just be filming myself you could do that that could be a way to kind of avoid being told to put your camera down each to the run you're gonna find each staff member different because some people don't mind and some people do mind i'm just one of those pers people amongst quite a few others who did not want to be filmed so yeah i hope that sort of answers your question and gives those of you who either fly with who either are going to be flight attendants are flight attendants or just are passengers a bit of an idea as to what the kind of policy is and how the general feeling is about it okay somebody was asking it's quite a long phrased question so i'm just going to shorten it somebody was asking if after a certain date they need to do a professional cabin crew training provided by an institute so the answer to that is no you don't need to do it but you can do it if you want to but it's not going to increase or reduce your chances of becoming a flight attendant because to be accepted in any airline it's mostly about your appearance sort of a little bit about your cost of a service experience and that's it really it's mostly about your appearance and a little bit about your experience your age your height so it's a, it's very appearance based but then you need a little bit of customer service experience in there and then you do the training now the training course is something you need to pass otherwise you will not be able to become a cabin crew you know i think i mentioned or i definitely mentioned in one of my previous videos that they do give you two chances past every single exam and there's about six exams in Ryanair I'm not sure about other airlines but with Ryanair there are two big exams and then four mini exams you need to pass all of them and you get two chances for each one so if you fail the first one you have a second chance and if you fail the second one then unfortunately you do get kicked off the course but you're given an opportunity to enroll on the next course but again same rules apply you do not need cabin crew training general cabin crew training you need training which is specific to the airline and the aircraft that you will be using when you work if you're a flight attendant and you had to get extra training before you applied for the job let me like leave a comment below but i think generally you just do the training once you are offered a place on a training course that's it and it's six weeks long it's not six to twelve months as you mentioned that the in some of these institutes do okay somebody asked another question hey i saw your video and really enjoyed it i'm going to have an online interview with ryan and i was wondering let's suppose i get accepted about the passport i have got a little issue because i have applied for the passport here in portugal but due to covid19 it's delayed so i don't think i'm going to have it in time for the assessment day and i really don't know what i should do you do need a passport to do this job of course it's flying <laughs> you, you need your passport every single day or your um or your id some countries do have ids instead of passports or you can use both your id and your passport to fly with so i think for portugal you can use your citizen id card because it is a valid uh, travel document and there are other countries like that so just check if your country the country that european country that you're coming from permits you to use your citizen id card as a travel document because maybe you could use that instead another thing you can do is you can possibly go to the training course if it's just a case of your passports expire about to expire what you can do is you can actually go to the training course you can try to order an express 
delivery passport so that it comes to you in time and you know arrives at the training course and then you're able to fly so many people had missing documents while we were at the training course and we just gathered our documents while we were there i had a reference posted to me I had to order my DBS check. There's a few things that I had to pay for. I had to pay for a translation of a document. You know, we had to do, loads of people kind of had to do quite a few things while at the training course. So not everybody had everything prepared beforehand. What I did recommend to this person, because I did get back to them, I sent them a message back. I told them to call up Ryanair or Crewlink and ask them specifically, do I need my passport on the training course to attend the training course or can I have it delivered to me while I'm here? There's no question about it. You definitely need your passport to fly, but I'm just not sure if you need it while you are on the training course but i tell you if you have a question and you really need it answered please don't hesitate to send them an email they will get back to you in most cases they do try to get back to you and if you feel as though the emails are a bit slow another thing you can do is to call call them up speak to somebody somebody will definitely have an answer and be prepared to help you okay so don't just wonder about these things just ask and somebody will be able to help you also probably even better than me because they have more updated information about the rules and everything okay so somebody says i had my interview three days ago online so i guess they're doing online interviews now instead of uh, face to face they said that they would give me a response in about two weeks what do you think is it worth it were you able to save a bit of money from the pay so this person is asking two questions really is it worth it and was i able to save a bit of money so to answer the first question is it worth it i would say it's worth it for the experience i think it was a good experience for me it was a good learning opportunity it was a bit of a stressful time but not necessarily specifically about the job it was more kind of a location thing i think if you really want to do this job i think if you're really keen to do it it's, this is the kind of job for somebody who really wants it if you want it and you get it and you can embrace the hard times the good times the bad times there will be good times there will be bad times there will be difficult times if you really want it it's gonna be worth it it should be worth it i think if you're kind of hmm i don't know if i want it i'm not sure you might end up really loving it and staying there for ages i know people who absolutely love the job absolutely adore it i have a friend who's been in this job for almost 10 years i think so it really is about your mindset it's about what you make of it because some people just really do hate the job a lot of people do find it stressful but do you know they do it and then other people find it a breeze it kind of also depends on your base if you're in a nice country and or a nice city or a nice space so i hope that answers your question i can't really say yes it's worth it or no it's not worth it it's really about do you want it that's it if you're asking if it was worth it for me personally hmm Mm. I would say it was a learning journey. I wouldn't say I I gained from it financially. I, if anything, I kind of went a bit backwards, but I learned so much. I did learn a lot. So I guess for life lessons, I guess it was worth it. I did really enjoy flying. I mean, it's a nice feeling like flying, but it can be it can be a bit quite exhausting on the body, but that's why you do have to make sure you do get your rest after flying. And the next question is what happens in the swimming test and I'm gonna save that information for the next video so guys I hope you have enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching please do give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed and follow me on Instagram and of course leave your requests like specific requests I'll try to answer them and I'll see you in my next video bye